Hey everyone, I am Becky and welcome to Buzzing About Romance, a quick shot of romance. I am joined by Carolina for this episode. Hi, Carolina. Hey, Becky. Um, I should note, just so we all know, Carolina is slightly ragey at me right now. <laughs> Not just slightly. This is, per- this is going to be full on. <laughs> be prepared for feisty Carolina. Um, <clears throat> so on this episode of A Quick Shot of Romance, we are reviewing Beautiful Liar by Lauren Rowe. This is book two in the Reed Rivers trilogy. This is a three book series following one couple, Reed and Georgina. This episode will contain spoilers for book one, which was Bad Liar, and now book two, which is Beautiful Liar. If you have not listened to our previous episode, go back now and listen to that. It will be linked in the in our on-the-shelf show notes for this episode. Carolina is reading this for the first time. I have read this series previously. <laughs> At the time of this recording, Carolina has not yet read or started book Three. Uh, I finished reading book two today. And about, oh gosh, what was it? About eight hours ago. And you're still angry at me? I am still angry. I'm angry. I'm angry at Reed. I'm angry at Becky. I'm angry at the author. I'm angry at everybody. (laughs) I'm angry. Just angry. So we're going to link the synopsis of this book in our on-the-shelf show notes at (laughs) buzzingaboutromance.com. Okay, so... Um, you know what? It's so funny because I forgot to get the release date. I think, um, hold on guys. Um, but the tropes, go ahead and give us some tropes that you got. Um, well it's rock star adjacent because he owns the record label. He's an alpha hole. She's a journalist. This is close proximity cause she's living with him. Um, work place romance as well. Um, there's some, frenemies to lover vibes through well that was carry over in the last book from the last book it really didn't (laughs) until the end um um (laughs) yeah i think that was carry over the frenemies to lovers they have such great tension and chemistry but that was that was rollover from the last book um, so this was released March 5th of 2020. Um, I will say, as this author was releasing this series, she actually upped her release date by three weeks because her fans were so incredibly upset at the end of book one. She bumped it up three weeks, and then she bumped up so that we got the third book in the series within 10 days of the release of the, first, oh, the second I, book. Oh, I, I am so thankful I am not waiting 10 days for this book because I would be pissed. I'm pissed right now. I'm pissed that I had to wait eight and a half hours to read book three. Like, So the series is, <laughs> this is a, um, this is a, trilogy so this is book two of a trilogy it is the reed rivers trilogy um put out percentage was like nine percent they did not take very long to get there no she made us wait in book one to like 90 something percent yeah um there is a third act breakup that oh yeah (laughs) that will leave you feeling things um okay so let's just let's just talk about this so as we pick up this book They have Georgina. Reed has convinced Georgina to live with him for a week while she does an intense interview on him for her magazine assignment because she Mm -hmm. he does not want her to hang out with Red Card Riot, one of his bands that belongs to his label. Specifically one of Seabom, one of the the drummer in Red Card Riot. Yeah. So he basically negotiates, they negotiate this whole thing to um <clears throat> that she lived with him for the week and he would throw a party to meet basically a bunch of all other bands plus other celebrities um that he would throw at his house so he would c- have control over who she met and who she interviewed um and they also at the end of book one they also negotiated that Reed would listen to Georgina's stepsister, Alessandra's demos, demos, three songs for one minute each. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So he it's they're back there the first night after the concert she picks to sleep in a different room from him she does not want to sleep in his room well and it's really interesting too because they give you he does a full house tour and you go on to the full house tour with him so you really understand the wealth that he has i mean the you in book one you kind of get it from his cockiness and what other people say about him and his prestige about owning the record label and you know because he has all of these bands but you get it in a deeper level based on the tour of the house and like the seven cars that he has and the pool and the workout room and the this and the that you really understand a lot more about him and the other thing I really liked about this tour is it it um Georgina also like asked some great questions to get to know him better and to understand him and they weren't like like these dip deep interview type questions they were just to get to know him and I and it talks about it in the book but like she was just trying to like genuinely trying to understand the person not her interviewee. Well, and I think it's really important. He is, Reed is very smart. And throughout the entire book this time, he refers to her as the intrepid reporter. He realizes how intelligent she mm -hmm. is. And within their negotiations, he says to her that he needs to be very clear when he's on the record and off the record. So they strike a deal that she will write the article and he will have the right to edit out anything he doesn't want in the article. Um, is this a mistake? Is this going to be okay? Have to wait till book three to find out. Um, but... Well, and, they, and they each... It's interesting because in the book, the author really kind of shows each character saying that he got the upper hand like reed says oh this is a this is a rookie mistake on her part and she's thinking like no i get to write the article that i want um and really break some ground and even though i gave him this concession like it's going to be great so it's really interesting they both see it from a different point of view um so after this tour um they listen to the music at reed keeps his end of the bargain and listens to the three minutes the three one minute pieces of Alessandro's demo and he's harsh I mean he is business read he's very he's uncomfortable you can tell he's uncomfortable doing this but he does not mince words and this character is a jerk and he um I don't think it's like sometimes we get a jerk who's really big into like throwing his power and his weight around Reed is a jerk because he's incredibly intelligent knows his business and is cocky based on that. He, he's cocky based on that. I, there's also an underlying of he's a little bit jaded because of he's been hurt in the past. Um, and and you also learn more in this book of um, it's not only personal relationships, but he's also been scarred from some business professional career like work relationships yeah. that that make him really put up these walls and so you really under you get a better understanding of why not that it excuses the way that he is but why the way he's put up these parameters and these boundaries for himself um does it make it any better no um because I think they also kind of, it was interesting that they, they were, they negotiated that they would listen to this. He tried to get it so that they listened to it naked in bed um, because, you know, he was hoping afterwards for other the sex. Things. He wanted the sex. Uh, um, yes, he did. Um, she said no. So she made him wear boxer briefs and she wore like shorts and a sleep tank. Right. Um, <clears throat> and and he was also like, she was getting excited. They're like, oh, we're getting to the 45 second mark. This is more than he listened to some other person. But then you realize, nope, when the one minute mark hit, he shut it off and went to the next track. He did exactly what he negotiated he was going to do. Um, 
Yeah, and I, then he gave the honest feedback. I think it showed too. And I liked how Lauren Rowe wrote this because we get that he's a man of his word. He is a man of his principles. He lives by a certain guideline, a certain set of rules. And I think that in a way that it's written, it helps us as the reader be able to frame where he's going to make allowances. Mm -hmm. Because he does do some other things throughout this book that are really kind of sweet and swoony. Mm -hmm. So there's this balance that we as a reader have to do. We have to balance this super intense, super intelligent asshole, for lack of a better word, over this like really swoony guy who, if he loves you, if you're in his circle, oh yeah, he'll, he moves he'll... the world for you. Well, and it was really interesting to also learn about this character from his inner circle and the things um, that <clears throat> I, it, <laughs> Lauren Rowe did a really interesting job of bringing a lot of people into the storyline very quickly without making you feel overwhelmed because there's a lot of times this happens. I mean, Becky, we've talked about it on yeah. other books where the pages get crowded. Like one of the things I thought, and we're jumping around in the storyline here for sure, but one of the things that I thought was really interesting and it worked really well was this, this book had the party at his house. And so um, Georgina knew some of the people, but she did her research because she's that intrepid reporter of, I want to know who's coming to this party. So I knew who to talk to, and I don't want to look stupid in front of them. So we spend a little time with her in her room while she researches and we get quick snippets about, oh no, who's going to be here. She already knows who this is because we've already kind of met them in the book. Oh, and this is the relation to this person. And we're going to meet this person. And here's three lines about this person, how they're connected to this person and how they're connected to read. Wasn't that brilliant? So it, I thought it was genius. It was like, oh, no, nope, I'm quickly following along. You get, you actually, I think it's, it was probably like three or four pages of really information dump, but you didn't feel like you were being information dumped. Because she puts it in the story. Because Georgina yes. is Googling these people and reading their Wikipedias and she's mm -hmm. looking for images of them online. And so it fits into the character's own nature. Right. And it, so Which it doesn't it take feel... us the reader out of the no, story. No, it felt very authentic. Um, but you got a, little, a lot of information quickly, but you didn't feel overwhelmed by it. Um, and I know we'll go back because there's some other things we need to talk about in this book. But it the like flash forward to the party a little bit you also as Georgina was meeting all of these people and they were they were talking about Reed very openly and um because they all sensed that she right. was somebody she's different. at a pre-party event leading up to yeah. the big overhaul party and it's his intimate circle it's that's invite there. only in intimate circle and they're each telling like their own very personal stories about Reed and you see the lengths that he goes to when people need something or want something or can help make their lives better or help them achieve their dreams like this man it's he's kind of even in the media called the man with the Midas touch because of what he does with his bands he also does that for his inner circle like they feel like okay, he'll make a phone call or he'll set up an interview or something. Um, but in their, but in their doing this, it helps Georgina mm -hmm. put some pieces and snap some pieces together. And I love the descriptive nature that Lauren Rowe used in this instance. She talks mm -hmm. about cotton balls, like the cotton balls are gathering and she gets a soft lob in the back of her head. Like if he loves you, if he cares about you, if he is your friend, he pulls strings behind the scenes that you mm -hmm. don't always see. Yeah. And it was an interesting analogy and in connection to, because as she starts putting the pieces together, she's like, oh, no, now it's a pebble. Now it's a stone. Now it's a rock. This is now not just a cotton ball. You get these pings that are, that are different. Um, yeah. Okay, but we have to go back. So okay, so we had to go back because after he listens to the demo and he's, you know, just and read it, it it makes sense. But 
Georgina is overtaken with emotion, and that is something this book does incredibly well. So I want to talk mm -hmm. about real quick, sometimes when we're reading a trilogy, book two feels like filler. Like, why, why do we have this book? Why couldn't you have just gone from book one to book three? Why do we need all of this in the center? And this is one of those trilogies that I feel actually moves us forward. Even though there's only one week in this book, this book mm -hmm. is one week long, we get a lot of emotion and a lot of forward movement. We understand characters. And now we're prepared for whether or not this, how this HEA is going to happen. We're desperate for it. Well, and I would, I would honestly say, I think the first third of the book, I was, I was feeling a little like that this was filler. Where are we going with this? Because there was a lot of things that were happening. Um, Georgina has a lot of big feels about Reed's reactions. And they're not all just because of Reed's comments. They're also because of her own reactions to the comments and how she doesn't how she reacted and emotions that bring it up for her not just what he not just what he said um we also get her exploring and um she meets his lawyer and she goes in and does some research and and but it was that conversation she, with the housekeeper over breakfast that if you just read it, it feels like she's just trying to get to know the guy, but she's also trying to put boundaries up, but she was so smart. Like, and it wasn't manipulative. Sometimes when we get situations like this, right. it feels manipulative. This wasn't. This didn't feel that no, way. No, this whole book, I think book two, felt very, a cross between, yes, yeah, she's doing research for her article, but there's a lot of it because she was becoming she's becoming invested in Reed as a person and falling for him connecting with him like the more she learns about him and because people are opening up to her she's really seeing this different side of him um and their nature their connection between the two of them he's opening up to her and he's surprised at how much he's opening up to her yeah. um the the I will say it was that part kind of up until the part where she does the research at the courthouse after she kind of talks to the lawyer a little bit. She decides to go to the courthouse because it's already been established at this point that Reed has, he's like, yeah, I've been sued. Like a lot of people just settle. Um, I typically don't unless I, I know I'm in the wrong or I know that the jury would see it that way. Um, but I don't want people to think that they can just kind of walk all over me for money um so he fights a lot of stuff so she does research about it and so she finds some interesting things and you know this is all going to come back and so it was kind of up until that point I was like okay where are we going with the story like I, I don't know I wasn't quite like okay what is do we need book two what is this book two about is this just all set up and and it wasn't until Reed and Georgina have this very deep conversation like I think it was midway through the book that they they open up to each other quite a bit and you they tell each other things that they haven't told anybody else yeah that you're like okay well and this I don't want to give and I don't want to give too. spoilers on that no um, no no and that's all I'm saying there is like, some content warning within that you guys and if you are reading this and need content warnings um there's an off-page assault referred to so um but that's all we're gonna say about it um what I do think was interesting is her research because she did this at the courthouse but then the next day she turns over and goes to rock and roll magazine which is the magazine mm -hmm. she's working for and mm -hmm. deep dives into their um into their old magazines because she wants to try to find out when reed first came on the scene and she knows it's tied into cc and in this it's like he had this really vulnerable moment with her that he shared and then she shared some big vulnerabilities also and um, and she talked about how 
like she needs to trust the person she's with and she makes it very clear that she needs the person she's with to always be honest and that she takes the lack of honesty from someone almost the same as you know it's a violation it's plain and simply Mm -hmm. a violation and reed sort of picks up on it but he doesn't like no because he's doing some things that you know i i think in his own mind he kind of picks up on things but in his own mind it's justified in his head of because he's always he's always kind of acted this way and nobody's yeah. ever called him on it nobody's ever pushed back he's gotten away with a lot of things because of who he is and and this is where and this is where as much as i'm pissed at becky and as much as i'm pissed at reed I'm putting a lot of trust in the author because I've read her books before. And honestly, I'm putting a lot of trust in Becky. Like, I know she's not going to steer me wrong. Like, I'm pissed at her right now because, like, I I had to wait eight and a half hours to read book three. Like, people, clear your schedules after book. Like, when you go into book two, you're going to want to just go straight into book three. Clear your schedules to go to do that. Um. Because you just, you see this flaw in him um, that he really just, he almost doesn't know better and he, and he, cause he's gotten away with it and people have allowed him to. And I think Georgina is really one of the first people to push back to the degree since he's gotten all of the success, push, push back on him quite a bit. Well, she has, and she goes to Rock and Roll Records and realizes that she's caught him in a lie. And this is what starts the cotton balls Mm -hmm. that turn into pebbles, that Mm -hmm. turn into stones, that turn into full out rocks. Um, And he... (sighs) And we're going to spoil this in the end because we're hoping you guys have read this with us. He has a yellow Ferrari that just came back. <laughs> so things happen in this party and she meets a lot of people. She flirts. Reed is trying to keep his distance and he's trying to let her be the reporter. But he's struggling. And then he corners Alessandra while he is stoned. Now, we have read Smitten by, which is Alessandra's book with fish. I know this, this, there is a scene in that book, the the party scene that, because we've read that, I have been waiting and chomping at the bit for this party here. Like all of this, I'm like, okay, what happens? Because I know it's, it has to do with Alessandra and Reed's interaction with Alessandra also know there's something else happening with Reed and Georgina all comes together. So I will say, I think this is again, another credit to how amazing this author is. These scenes are perfect. Mm -hmm. Like there was no misstep between these scenes. Like she did it right. And we get it from Reed's point of view. He doesn't think he's anything wrong. Alessandra is obviously upset and in her book we read from her point of view how this goes down and so it was just really great and really well done um and i think that's an incredibly hard thing to do because you know there's a lot of time between these two books that she wrote so that was so well done but back to this yellow <laughs> ferrari so again remember cotton balls are becoming pebbles pebbles are becoming stones stones are becoming rocks There's this yellow Ferrari that had been in an accident. It was now back in his garage. And there's a story about golfing that takes place in this book. And And it's a really, like, a really deep emotional story about golf. Yeah. And the Ferrari is the first expensive car he ever bought when he made his first money. Like, this was his sign that he was going to be okay, that he'd made it. I will say, it's not his first, quote unquote, big ticket item when he got famous. 
it, and that's that particular read the book because it's really sweet what he does with right. his first big purchase like quote unquote big purchase I say um because he kind of calls it that but not he's like this is this is the first thing I did when I really made money and it's things like that make you like love him so much yeah so he um he has this yellow Ferrari. He has this golf club. Alessandra catches him coming out of the garage with his ex, who it is very clear still has a thing for him and um, has been, uh, has been, um, I'm looking for words here, Carolina. Well, even though she's engaged, they've, They've had an interaction. They've had an interaction. She is definitely the one. Um, she's the one still carrying a torch for him. He's made it um, clear that uh, he doesn't want anything to do with her. Like he's moved on. She's still holding a torch. And so he comes out of the garage. Her makeup is smeared. She is flushed. Her hair is all must. Disheveled. And Georgina catches them. And she's already pissed. She's already pissed because she's figured out he's done something bad. And so he, um, she goes into the garage and takes the golf club. And first they have a few more, they have a few more comments and reads an idiot. Big idiot. And a jerk. He's a big idiot. He's a big jerk. And <laughs> they, they, throughout this book, they, they kind of joke about, Lisa Left Eye Lopez from TLC and how she Okay, like that's another funny piece. He makes all these pop culture references that she does not get. get yeah, the age to kind of difference. show their age difference. It's yeah. so funny. Um, uh and she basically goes Lisa Well, Left she Eye goes Lopez. to hit his Bugatti. Right? And he's yes. like, "Please. Please." And so she looks at him. She looks at the Ferrari. And she just goes to town. Like, there will not be anything to save of this car. She is convinced. Yeah. She then... And we're convinced because she goes through the whole thing. And, and but also know that this, yes, he instigated it, but there there's a lot more emotion behind it. Um, it's mostly has to do with Reed, but there's a lot more as well from her past yeah. that it all comes. It's the lies. Thing. It's the lies. It's the lies for sure. So then he, um, she realizes that something's going on with Alessandra. Kat, I think says to her, you know, have you seen, or she asks, Kat, have you seen her? And Kat's like, no, but she was pretty emotional. I saw her earlier. And so she goes and she finds Alessandra, finds out what Reed well fish runs into her um oh right it was fish fish from said 22 I, goats yeah and because he's pissed at reed he's yelling at reed now and he's like she doesn't want to see me she only wants to see you and and fish tells reed off yeah and reed's blown away by this because nobody like fish telling somebody off period is right he's the quiet guy but again we get in his book we have that scene in the book Smitten. So yes. if, or if you haven't read Smitten, you have to go read Smitten. Um, but Ale Georgina goes upstairs, finds out from Alessandra what's going on. And what I think was really unique in this is Alessandra is more pissed at G uh, G Georgina than she yeah. was at Reed because she wasn't prepared. Yeah. She, she just wants wanted to be, to be prepared. prepared. She yeah. didn't want to be prepared. Uh, but yeah. And so they end up leaving. Um Leave. But Georgina puts a lot of other things together and she asks Reed one last question. Yeah. And. Yeah. And a lot is revealed. <laughs> a lot is revealed. And when she she and Alessandra leave the party, they pack up, they take all her things. She's going home to her dad. And um, when she leaves, she gets into the Uber and doesn't turn around, doesn't even bother to flip him off because, as you know, in book one, when she left, she turned around and gave him the double bird. Like, she was done with him, but she gave well, him the... And that chapter is really interesting because it's from Reed's point of view going, please turn around. Please turn around. Please. I. He wants her anger 
because if he he's like if i get her anger i know like he hasn't lost her he hasn't lost her yeah and he does feel at this point like he's lost her and she breaks down in the car and that's the end of book two Oh, gosh. I will say, we didn't talk about the spice in this book, that there is some really naked uh, swimming and self-pleasuring that they do between a window. You know, there's a sex swing. Yeah, there was that scene, which was surprising. But for all the talk about him since book one, tying her up and doing stuff, we don't get that scene. No, we didn't. And I'm a little pissed about that. Because I wonder if it's a bonus scene out there and around because she had to cut it for length. I sure hope so, because I would have rather like had that scene. I get the swing thing like it fits within the context of the book. But you've been talking about this since book one. Yeah. And then I get like, okay, here we go. We're having it. And then all of a sudden it's the like chapter ends and then we get like we get the next thing. And I'm almost a little pissed about that. That's fair. Um, okay, so I have to ask this question now that we have come to the end of book two. Yes. On the Reed Rivers rating, on a scale of one to five, five being a book boyfriend. Remember, at the end of book one, Carolina's Reed Rivers rating was a four. Mm-hmm. How much do you love like Reed Rivers at the end of this book? I was talking about this with my husband. I had to like process the book quite a bit and come up with my score. Um, point five. He's point, a point five. five right? Point five. I'm I'm pissed at him. I am very much pissed at him. And this and 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 I will say that part of the reason I want to get into book three so badly is because I want to see how this author recovers. Like, like, how can he redeem himself? What's the grovel? How can he redeem himself? What's the grovel? What, how do they, how do they survive and make this back together? Because you know, you know, in between these two books, they are really the perfect fit for each other. Um, and so how does that happen? And it, and it goes back to also, like, if I didn't trust Becky with reviews I would be like I'm out like I'm done we're we're not even getting I'm so pissed at Reed Rivers right now that we're not going there but like I said I've read this author before I trust the author I trust Becky even though I'm still pissed at her right now I trust her and we're going into book three people we're going into book three um I Again, do. save save time in your calendar when you pick up book two you're gonna want immediately book jump into book three so block however much time you need yeah. for all of that i will say i is, at the end of this book i immediately messaged lauren Rowe and was like what the fuck read rivers <laughs> what wtf like what 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 like did he not see this coming but he manipulated some things and he and again the stories with the family really help a see that he is this kind of caregiving spoony guy and he just wants to help those that he loves. But yeah. Yeah, he's got a lot to come back from. Yep. Anyway. I, I'm looking I I I'm excited for it. I'm pissed at him. As much as I'm pissed at him, I want to see how this all turns out. But anyway. Carolina, thank you so much for joining me for this quick shot of romance. We will be on to book three now. Um, I can't think. What's the third book? I don't know. Uh, Beloved Liar. Beloved Liar. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Thanks, Carolina. Uh, I I don't know that I can say you're welcome right now. (laughs) Okay. Well, until next time, everyone. Happy reading. Until I read book three. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes.